Hello, thank you. <clears throat> First, uh, my presentation will run for the next four hours, so you're, I'm really pleased that you can stay here up to 9 o'clock p.m. No, I'm just joking. I will go very quickly because I also have 20 minutes, possibly less. Uh, you already played yesterday with the Apple TV, so I will skip some of the basic stuff. You all know what the, the Apple TV is. There are six models up to now. These models can be identified by a model number and an hardware model number, as you saw yesterday. Uh, as always, in uh, forensics, the first step is to identify what we have in front of us. And uh, the model number, it's quite easy to, to find on an iOS device. You can find it in, on the back of the device. Every model is with A and four digits after. This is interesting to, um, so that you can understand what you can really get from uh, the device. For the first generation of the Apple TV, the acquisition and analysis is quite simple. Uh, it was using a traditional hard drive, so you can create a traditional forensic image, and there are already publications online and videos uh, since 2009. So if you take a look at these videos and the, and the presentation. Uh, with the most recent ones, so starting from the second generation to the fourth and fifth generation, uh, the good news is that there's no way to put set a passcode protection on the Apple TV as we have on the iOS, other iOS devices. The bad news is that the USB port is used only as Apple uh, writes on, his, uh, on its website for service and support. So when you connect the Apple TV to a computer and you launch iTunes, you will get only two options, eject or restore. Not really forensics, both of them. So uh, iTunes is not a way to get the data. You can do some form of manual acquisition, so turning on the Apple TV and go through the options. It's a, as always, manual acquisition works, also with smartphones. Not really complete and in-depth, but it's good. But it's not completely true that the USB port is only for support. The Apple file conduit, the AFC protocol, uh, the AFC service is active in all the models. So you can get, you can still have access to some information. You can have access to basic information. You can have, of course, access to real-time logs. You can have access to a part of the file system and you can have access to crash logs. So we'll go a little bit in details with, with this information. This is the <coughs> device, these are the device information, this is the device information that you can get by using an open source tool, tool called Libai Mobile Device. With the iDevice Info tool, you can extract basic information from the Apple TV, so the MAC address, the version of the operating system, the serial number, the time zone, the date and time, Wi-Fi MAC address, so on and so forth. You can also get syslogs, so I device syslog again in Libai mobile device. And you can extract uh, this information, so both system log and also crash report by using, uh, for example, this free tool. It's called iBackupBot. It's quite easy to use. Just connect the Apple TV, get the syslog and the crash report. Crash report can be useful because you can use them to create a sort of timeline of the usage of the Apple TV. So you can understand if the Apple TV was turned on and if the user was interacting with it. And you also have access to part of the file system. So with the AFC protocol, you have access to a part of the file system. In particular, for example, you have access to the DCIM folder. If the user is sharing some pictures through iCloud, you can get pictures there. You can also get a quite interesting database. It's called the media library, .sqlite.db. The media library is the shopping library, so it contains what the user bought on Apple services, on iTunes. The good point here is that this file is shared, is synced among devices. So if you have an iPhone, for example, and it is locked, and you want to know uh, the account user ID, or what the user did on iTunes, on uh, um, sorry, on uh, um, Apple Store, buying things from the Apple stores, and you have an Apple TV, you can get this information because there's no way to set a passcode on the on the Apple TV. 
recently also I tested it with um, the tool from Alconsoft and now they added support for AFC. Also other tools are now supporting, are supporting of course AFC. I was not lucky in getting data from the Apple TV with various tools because probably there is some sort of checking that it's not an iPhone or an iPad, but I think it's quite easy to implement in other tools. It's the same protocol, not, not differences. So these are the basic information that you can get from every and each model of the Apple TV because um, these are stored or in the crash logs or in the sys logs or in the in files that you can get with, through the AFC protocol. Um, these are probably the most interesting one. You can get <coughs> the iCloud account name and the iCloud ID. This could be useful if you have a locked iPhone and you want, for example, and you want to ask Apple, please provide me the data from this user and you don't know the user ID and you have an Apple TV, you can get the user ID from the Apple TV and then go to Apple and ask for the data. It's an option. So also crash logs can be useful because you can get not only the history of what happened on the device. You can create a timeline, as I said, but you can also get the information of the Wi-Fi networks where the device was connected to. So if, an, if you have an Apple TV that was moved from one place to another place, in the crash logs, you can get a sort of history, a log of the Wi-Fi network that the Apple TV was connected to. And last, the media library database. This is an example of a, a information taken get from, the, from the crash logs. And as you can see, you have phone numbers, you have the email address of the user, and so something that it's interesting for an investigation. This is the structure of the database, quite complex, but the structure is, um, let me say, um, coherent in the various iOS devices. So because it, it has to be synced through devices, the media library on an iPhone, on an Apple TV, on a Mac OS X, on, a, on Windows, as the same structure. So you can get it from the Apple TV and search inside this library uh, the most useful information. We are going to share on our GitHub account a simple, really simple Python script with a quite complex SQLite <laughs> query to extract the most useful information from this library. This is in interesting because it, it can be used not only against the media library extracted from the Apple TV but also for a media library that is stored on a computer or on an iPhone or an iPad and so on and so forth. And not only the in files that were bought through the Apple TV are, seen, are stored in the media library, but everything, every kind of item that was bought by the user on the Apple servers is synced inside the media library SQLite DB. This is one of the one of the query, the simplest one. You can get, for example, the date of purchase, the file size, the account ID that was used to, to, buy, the, to buy the things, and so on and so forth. The, last, the, the second option, because all, all, all I said up to now can be done on every kind of device, the second option is to try to jailbreak the device, to go more in depth. This is what we did to provide you the data for the rodeo. There are various jailbreak for uh, Apple TV, these are for the fourth generation of the Apple TV, and there are various processes that were published online. For example, this is for the uh, version 9 of the TV OS. Uh, the file system layout is quite similar to iOS, so, or to Mac, Mac OS. Um, some information I will go very quickly because you have already seen some of them yesterday. Time zone easy to understand, easy to, to get. Uh, information about the IP configuration, the network that the user, that the, the, the Apple TV is connected to, last, was connected to for the last time, the IP addresses, the time in, in which was, in which the um, connection was done, and so on and so forth. Also the history of the Wi-Fi network. The history of Wi-Fi network is interesting because you can get as you have in the iPhone information about the join and the auto join, uh, the MAC address of the Wi-Fi network that you can use to search online the geolocation of this network and so on and so forth. Also a traditional dynamic test file, the, the so, so, sort of user dictionary. 
and also information about the accounts that were used on the device. So in this case, for example, you can see that it is not stored in the DB, but in write ahead log of the accounts dot accounts free dot SQLite database. Uh, <coughs> last, <coughs> as Vladimir was mentioning, I, iOS devices are uh, sharing or syncing information among them. So what you can extract from the device from an Apple TV are some information that were not exactly used by the user on the Apple TV. For example, the, the, the image you were playing with yesterday, you found a, a file called com.apple.wifid.plist. This file is stored on the Apple TV, but the content of this file are the Wi-Fi network, networks that my phone, my iPhone connected to. So my Apple TV was never there. My phone was there but it's synced with the Apple TV, okay? So it's interesting because you can get information without the need to crack or enter into the iPhone. And so again, you can geolocate in some case, some of the Wi-Fi network. Other information that is shared is the weather, weather cities. Again, you had a question yesterday, just a quick information. Santa Marina Salina is a small, tiny village in Sicily, where my grandfather was born. It's in the Aeolian island, it's a small island. So my, my Apple TV was never there. My phone was there, of course. So you can at least say that my phone was there or I have an interest for, the, for that place. Of course, with the Apple TV, there's no way to check the weather. There's no application, okay? So there's no reason to share this information, but it's shared. Uh, the headboard is the sort of the like the springboard on iOS. Uh, you have app order, you can see which app are installed. You can see some pictures from this app, but more interesting, you can see the cached data. So you can see what the user saw on the screen and when it happens because you have timestamps for the files. So you can, again, create a more complete timeline of the usage of the Apple TV. And also we have snapshots from the applications like we have on every kind of app on iOS or other device, not only iOS, of course. Also TV movies, so you can get which movies the user bought or saw on the Apple TV store. Also the video, the cached video is stored there. So you can find, it's a structured file composed in the first half by the plist containing information with the URL, when the, f when the video was uh, downloaded and so on and so forth. And the second part is actually the content. So the MPEG video, so embedded in a single file. Um, you, have, you, you can have third-party application, of course, installed. You get, got crazy yesterday trying to understand <laughs> the Netflix application. <laughs> um, we have both the app, so the content, the bundle, and the data. The data is stored in a different, uh, different subfolder, of course. Uh, in the case, for example, of YouTube, uh, you can have simple plist file telling you information like the country, in which country it was launched, where was the Apple TV, which kind of YouTube website or preferences the user was seeing, and the, for example, a timestamp of the last activity that can be, of course, converted to a timestamp to a real date and time. Again, for every and each application, you have snapshots, so you can recover a sort of history of what the user saw on his, on his Apple TV. Mm, this is an example. So, to, I was quite quick <laughs> in 20 minutes. So, um, a sort of guideline, if you will ever have to handle an Apple TV. Uh, start with the identification of the model. Uh, if it's a first generation, it's quite easy. If it is a second to fourth generation, my suggestion is to start with the acquisition of what you can get without any kind of jailbreak. So real-time logs, crash logs, and file system, part of the file system through the AFC protocol. Then check if you need some more additional information via a manual acquisition. And in the end, check if a jailbreak is available, applicable to the specific version, and try to acquire the whole file system. 
these are some useful tools that you can get and in the end you have a list of the actual actually available jailbreak for the um, Apple TV up to tvOS 11.1 and thanks again as I said yesterday to Sarah because she provided us a jailbroken Apple TV for testing research and for preparing the rodeo and these are our contacts um, on our website you can find the link to our github account where we will publish in the next week probably our script as soon as claudia will finish it so because she's still working in some conversions of that so thanks <laughs>